After you're done watching this video, make sure you click on the link below to go to the OTRS Central Store and hashtag buy a shirt. Then you click that subscribe button because it's all about subscribe or die and then click the bell, what the hell, because by God, we are going to hashtag make wrestling fun again in 2017. And Lord knows we need all the help we can get making wrestling fun after the steaming, heaping pile of horse shit that we got out of what I think is unequivocally the absolute worst pay-per-view of WWE in 2017. I do not see how any other show could be this bad the rest of this year, and clearly none of them were this bad. Like, even Extreme Rules sucked, and it was not battleground-level terrible. This was boring ground. This was horrible. This was hashtag fire road dog shit. It was that bad. Like who looks at this show, maps it out, and decides that this is anything other than going full retard? And who thinks in a week where we have heightened awareness of suicide prevention after Linkin Park's lead singer uh, committed suicide, that it's good to trot this out there to the Philadelphia audience? Imagine all those poor fucks that paid WWE ticket price money to go see this show live. If this doesn't make you want to jump off the bridge as a wrestling fan, I don't know what does. Horrible. So let's talk about this shit fest of a show. I thought we were in for a weird and bad night once you got to the pre-show and you've got Aiden English beating Ty Dillinger. Not that it really matters, but... I just looked and he's like, eh, maybe you give the crowd a little bit of something. No, we're going to have Aiden English it win. Let's move on. It's not like these guys uh, matter anyways. It's uh, NXT was the glory days. You kick off with the tag team championship match. And in theory, that sounds great because these guys, Team Slaughter and Team Creed, as I call them, uh, did some great athletic shit and did all they could to tear the house down. The problem with that is, is that they are ultimately the opening fucking match. Either A, don't do all the shit that you did because you are the opening match and you are trying to set the table and just get the people into it, not having them get worn out emotionally right fucking away, or this speaks to more of the card structure and the stupidity of said structure, don't have these guys freaking open the show if they're going to go balls to the walls like this. While frankly, this match had too much shit for my taste and all the moves that these guys were kicking out of, if I wanted to watch an ROH or New Japan tag match, I would go watch those matches right now. This was easily the highlight of the night in terms of the in-ring work. It was literally all downhill from here. So I'm not even going to bury this shit because it was the one little matzo ball of positivity that you probably got as a fan watching this steaming pile of shit all night long. Shinsuke Nakamura, Baron Corbin, maybe they didn't care because of the finish and what was designed and who could blame them. Like you're building up Corbin. The only element of storytelling you have here is that he's this ruthless guy, that he's an aggressive guy, and he wants to inflict more pain, so that way he can take a bitch-ass way out of the match by kicking the dude in the nuts. There was no ring chemistry, no other real story told, and the kick in the nuts finish was frankly appropriate because this match was a kick in the nuts, easily the worst Shinsuke Nakamura match I think I have ever seen, and kind of just par for the course for Baron Corbin. But kick in the nuts for a kick in the nuts match. This women's five way. Why do all this shit with Tamina and Lana just for both of them to end up getting tapped out back to back by Becky Lynch? And furthermore, in this five way match, why not do pins? Why do we have to make people tap? Why are we going to that level? You shouldn't just be using fucking submission finishers to make people tap out if there's no real story there. And the only real story was Tamina and Lana. So the story is they both get tapped out this was fucking stupid. This match was fucking stupid. This is laziness. And this is why people are talking about hashtag fire road dog. And they should be. Lame finish for a lame match. And afterwards, when Naomi's out there and she gets into the ring to come shake Natalia's hand, at that point in time, why in the bluest of blue fucks wouldn't she just lay out Naomi, allow Carmella to come down and cash in? So that way, Natalia would much rather you would think face Carmella for the title as opposed to Naomi. I'm just saying, but again, who fucking cares? It was terrible. So I thought the United States Championship match between Kevin Owens and AJ Styles was going to be a saving grace and kind of get the show back on the right track. And 
It was just there. And then, of course, the finish happened. Why do the MSG title change just to go right back? And in particular, why would you do this bullshit-ass-looking finish? This was dumb. This was stupid. And this is something that speaks to going hashtag full retard. This was full retard right here. And it's appropriate that it would be Road Dog in charge of the show because this was absolutely going full retard. Don't go full retard, especially if the full retard is just retarded. And this was shit. Like, at first when I looked at it, I thought, oh, it's a double pin. Like, we didn't even have the right camera. Just everything about it was so fucked up. The finish fell flat. And you could tell at this point in time that if we aren't already careening down the hill into the valley, it was only going to get worse from here because the next match was going to be the flag match between Rusev and John Cena. The whole premise of this is stupid. We've been here literally two plus years ago, two and a half years ago with Rusev, and he's back in the same exact fucking spot being served up as fodder for John Cena. And of course we have to go, and it was kind of the theme of Battleground. The way we were, had several people dressing up in American type of gear, it felt like it should have been called, oh, I don't know, maybe the Great American fucking Bash. How stupid is the concept of this match when Rusev is representing Bulgaria, an American ally? When at one point in time he was representing Vladimir Putin and Russia, and based off of the current societal climate here in the United States it makes all the sense in the world but of course we couldn't go there because now we've got Linda McMahon is in the fucking cabinet unbelievable the whole premise of this was stupid and also if the only way you can win is not just get the flag but then you have to walk up the damn ramp and plant it in the freaking uh, stand because again since it involves John Cena we got to do bigger better bolder and all this other bullshit why is there a ref out there what is he out there to do? Because he's not involved in the finish ultimately. And it's frustrating as I'm watching this. These guys are worried about setting up props and doing this shit. Why don't you walk briskly or run anything? We're just meandering and standing and posing and all this other crap. And why are we allowing the American flag to drop on the ground several times and think this is okay? And then when it gets to a certain point, you're like, Rusev's got the dominance here. Why wouldn't he just take the American flag and shove it in his trunks? Why wouldn't he sit there and hide it? Why wouldn't he sit there and throw it into the crowd? Why wouldn't he, if anything else, just take the little pedestal holder that was sitting on top of the podium off of the United States side for Cena and throw it somewhere above the Titantron or some crap so that way it would be literally impossible for Cena to win the fucking match. Why? Because when it comes to John Cena, we take any elements of logic and psychology and completely throw them out the fucking window. They do not matter. Nobody cares. Just like nobody cared about this fucking match. It just went on and on and on and on. And all you can say is, hashtag LOL, Cena wins. Hashtag Breakfast Club rules, bitches. This match was brutal. Bullshit. Holy crap. Brizongo. We were supposed to get this payoff to finding out who actually had killed the horse. And I know Karen Jarrett's got to be pissed. You know, in between sessions of trying to sell crappy 8x10s and getting people to get some Global Force gold, she's got to be absolutely fucking angry that somebody would do that to a fellow horse. But nonetheless, we're supposed to find out who did it. And then just uh, Tyler Breeze and Fandango get attacked and they're laying on the ground and I'm like, oh, you lucky sons of bitches. And people, by the way, I watch so you don't have to, so you should be thankful. But these guys got to take the easy way out. They got knocked out and dragged out and didn't have to watch the rest of this fucking show. Unbelievable. So one of the things you were actually thought you were going to get a payoff to, you didn't even get a payoff to that. And then we get Mike Kanellis and Sami Zayn. And I was really hoping the power of love could help us to hashtag pray the Zane away. But of course, it was a lame fucking match. By now, the crowd is ready to fucking get the hell out of Philly, get the hell out of the Wells Fargo Center, because they've had enough with this shit, and they know they've got an atrocious Punjabi prison match still to come. This was a lame fucking match with the 50-50 booking finish. Why the hell would you have Mike win on Tuesday just to have Sami Zayn win here? Why would you undercut the heel's heat and actually utilize the heater, in this case, in Maria Canellas to get some heat just so that way the Uber driver wins and yet still doesn't fucking get over? Because Road Dog is a fucking moron. 
And again, I understand why people are saying fire Road Dog because based off of this shit, he deserves it. Unbelievable. And it just goes to show you again, just because people work in the business in no way, shape, or form is an indication that they actually merit that position or in any way, shape, or form know anything of the bluest of blue fucks of what the hell they are doing. Seriously. Video game cats and backyard fed people would do better bullshit than this. And then we get to the main event. Because the show hadn't gone on long enough, we needed to make sure it went over three hours. WWE, fuck you. It's bad enough SummerSlam's gonna have two hours of pre-show and four plus hours of main card. Now you've gotta go over three hours on the freaking secondary pay-per-views? Kiss my motherfucking ass. Fuck you. I gotta work the next morning. And some of the other people do too. There was no need for this show to have to go long. But of course, the WWE does, because even though nothing really good fucking happened, we still didn't manage our time well because we're morons. Imagine this. You're in Philly, you're at the Wells Fargo Center, and you bought a ticket to this. And you have to sit there and try to look through multi-levels of these steel-reinforced bamboo bars to be able to see the match. Talk about the ultimate of obstructed views. Or you're trying to watch it on the damn Titan truck. Imagine how stupid you gotta feel for paying a ticket, buying for a ticket to watch this shit. The match rules, especially with the doors crap, it's just too much to foul. And that's the whole premise of the Punjabi prison match. Being fucking stupid. It, it always was, and it still is. And some of you are going to say, well, you were asking for the Punjabi prison match. And yes, by now, for some of you, you should know when the Schleg Daddy is asking for something, that doesn't always necessarily mean that is it a positive thing. That doesn't always necessarily mean that it's going to be a good thing. I may be asking for, for pure entertainment, OTR Central video purposes. Did you ever think of that? Because God knows again, I needed some type hook of something to talk about tonight. This was terrible. I feel bad for the Singh brothers, though. All the shit they were doing and the way they've been abused by Randy Orton, I hope they're getting better money than I envision they're probably getting. I would say I hope they get health care, but the WWE gives that to the corporate employees, not the independent contractors. <laughs> because, of course. And, and, you know, my whole thing about wanting the Punjabi prison match was because there was that sadistic part of me that wanted to see Great Khali because since he's the one that brought the Punjabi prison to WWE, it would make sense to have him make an appearance here. And by God, hashtag we got Kali. And how awesome was this in a match full of stupid shit, no matter how many ECW type of things you try to do. The match is stupid, is going way too fucking long, not enough interesting crap is happening. It's just lame. Here comes great Kali out to help Jinder Mahal retain his title. Which means, yes, people indeed... Jinder Mahal, your WWE champion, had the Singh brothers hiding under the ring to have them come out and help. To where that wasn't going to be enough, he had Great Khali have to come out and save the day. Meaning that your WWE champion couldn't beat a Breakfast Club member uh, without it being four on one. Man, that just serves him up so nicely on a silver platter for fucking next month at SummerSlam when Cena takes that title from him. God, this match was terrible. You made your champion look fucking stupid while the epicness of seeing Great Khali again in WWE helped. At this point in time, nothing was going to save this show. This was an absolute waste of fucking time. This was a total piece of shit. I'm sorry, but if you thought this match is good, you indeed have went full retard. Vince McMahon for signing off on this show clearly went full retard. And Road Dogg's punk ass clearly went full full retard do you think road dog you could have used some fucking pyros for this goddamn show a special set maybe no you're right you know what it doesn't make a difference because nothing would have helped this fucking show you stupid fucking idiot who books this shit and thinks this is any fucking good at all easily by far 10 times worse than extreme rules from raw this is without a shadow of a doubt the worst Worst, worst WWE pay-per-view and wrestling pay-per-view I've seen in 2017. I don't see how anything else is going to match at the rest of the year. Unbelievable. Fire Road Dog. But again, this is the Schleg Dead here at OTRS Central. Remember, it's not the wrestling show you want. 
just the wrestling show you need. Hashtag buy a shirt, subscribe or die, and we'll do better next time making wrestling fun again.